Dit programma wordt mede mogelijk gemaakt door het International Film Festival Rotterdam. Welkom bij de 43e editie van het International Film Festival Rotterdam. Deze week worden in de stad weer honderden films vanuit de hele wereld vertoond. In het komende programma Big Talk praat Hans Maarten van der Brink vijf avonden in het Oude Luxor met een bijzondere gast van het filmfestival. En vanavond is aan de beurt de Britse regisseur David McKenzie van het gevangenisdrama Start Up. Hi and welcome. Does your uh, finger magic work? Uh, can you hear me, everyone? No. no. Okay. We'll share the microphone. Hello. Okay. First time in Rotterdam. Um, we will talk about the film, we will give some context, but uh, we will not spoil the story. Okay, good. As far as we can. Um, start up, I, th I think, starting with the title, I think that means an upgrade to business class. Yes. What, what does it mean in, 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 this, uh, in, in this film? Where, where does the title come from? Uh, the, the title comes from a practice which may or may not happen. It's totally deniable, it's rumored to happen. Um, within the British criminal justice system where uh, teenagers or pe uh, people from the ages of 18 to 21 um, uh, who are in uh, uh, what would be young offenders institutes are put into adult jail uh, prematurely because they're too much trouble for the young offenders system uh, and that's where, what the title comes from. It, it's never officially been practiced uh, uh, this is a fiction film, so I'm not saying it definitely is happening, but uh, there are very strong rumors that, that this is something that ha is happening. And also, uh, the new policy in the UK, they're looking at the idea of integrating um, young offenders into the adult system anyway. So, a long-winded way of talking about that. Well, well, we will not discuss if that's a good idea. Um, it, it certainly doesn't look like that in, in your film. Okay. Um, <laughs> but why did you want to make a film about life in prison? Was it uh, something you were aiming to do for, for a long time or was, a, was there simply a scenario by somebody else that you thought, I'll do it? Well, I mean, the way I decide to do all films is somehow rather getting uh, an interest in, in, in the material. Uh, in this particular case, uh, a script came from Jonathan Asso, the first time writer who, who works as a therapist within the prison system. Uh, and. Uh, it was a, a recommended to us by a novelist that we know, uh, and, and it was very, very strong, very powerful vision, uh, and I was drawn to the material, as simple as that. Uh, I, I didn't think about doing a prison movie before then, but in, on seeing uh, the power of the script, uh, and then working with Jonathan to evolve the script and to, and to, and to make all, all, all the things that eventually you know, be become part of the film, uh, I, I really engaged with the material. But having engaged, with, with doing, for, uh, uh, doing a genre film. I've never made a genre film before. Um, sorry, do you want the microphone? Yeah, 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 yeah. We have, to, we have to, sorry, uh, a little bit of a power struggle here now. Yeah, oh, so yeah, yeah no, yeah, well, okay. okay, beg your pardon. Sorry. Um, well, you, you mentioned the word genre film. Uh, you are a director, you knew uh, there's a first time writer that the prison film is a genre. Yes. Uh, from uh, The Birdman of Alcatraz to um, Un Profet. Mm -hmm. um, what is what is attractive about working within a genre? Just to, to break the limits or, or, or uh, obey to them? H how does your film relate to maybe the laws and rules of the of the, of the prison film genre? Um, as someone who doesn't really respond to genre normally, this was a, it was it, you know, it, there was no way of escaping. This was definitely going to be a prison film from the from, from yeah. the word go, uh, and it was actually kind of liberating for me to be within the confines of something, of an existing genre, but also within the confines of the visual vocabulary of doors and corridors and bars and windows and, uh, and, and all of the things that, that make up the, the, the architecture of a prison. 
uh, and as well as that, the rhythms and routines of uh, um, a, a prison life. And so, in a way, the, the confinement of the genre and the confinement of, of the subject uh, work very nicely together. And for me, it was a, it was a liberating process nicely. as a filmmaker. Nicely as a, for, for the process okay, of making yeah. films. Not, in not, an not, artistic yeah, uh, yes, sense artistic. of the work, yeah. yeah. Uh, how, there is something I think is, is, is um, maybe one of your trademarks in the whole... Um, in the whole approach to this film. Um, I would say, and please contradict me if it's not true, there's no psychology here, which is surprising for uh, 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 considering the fact that it was written by a therapist. Yes, it's a, I mean, it, it, I mean it, it, not only is it written by a therapist, but it contains quite a few scenes involving therapy. Um, in a rather caricatural way, I would say. In a rather caricatural way? Yeah. Am, am well, I doing? No, I don't think you're doing justice, justice to. to it. I think oh, you definitely. Sorry. It, I think it's in a real, it's a very, very real way, yeah. um, uh, and and very much a reflection of the reality of the process that Jonathan, the writer, um, evolved in his very special therapy. Which is, so so what we're showing on film is very close to a reality, and certainly not a caricature. I'm very offended. Uh, okay, um, you, you are you're talking to the, the, the son of a therapist, okay. so maybe that uh, accounts for my mistake. But do you, I think you might mean there's no backstory, or in terms of psychology, I think there's quite a lot of psychology, but, there, but, it, but it's not embedded into uh, the, the rationale as, as to how things are happening. We, we're not, we, we, uh, we are choosing to live in the here and now of the, uh, of you, the you, narrative. You're in a sense, locked in the situation without the escape of, ah, well, this was the reason, so, yes. so you, that's, I meant, that's yes, sort of yes. psychology. Yes. Um, how, how, how did you approach the, um, the, um, the, 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 the filming process? Was there a, a kind of method act, acting uh, involved, you know, getting into the character? Because we, we have a whole set of people, a lot of extras, very uh, curious where they came from, because they look really um, a f a fearsome. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and we have uh, uh, two main characters who, all re who really, uh, I mean, are very believable in their, in their, in their role, in their aggression. So, so the process. Uh, well, well, the process was a great process for me. Uh, it was the first time I've ever had, ever had a chance to make a film uh, sec shooting sequentially. So we shot the film in story order. Uh, which was a fantastically liberating process for all of us, but I think particularly the actors, because they, uh, they, they learn their character as, a, as the narrative progresses. Uh, and, you and didn't rehearse before? Uh, oh, we did a bit of rehearsing, but... but, but outside but in, the prison? Yeah, outside, well, a little bit, even in the prison. But the combination of shooting it sequentially in a real prison, uh, where, so there was no cheating. We weren't, we weren't sort of geographically faking very much at all. Um, just meant that we were in, in, involved in the world as much as we possibly could be. And all of the actors, they didn't have you know, trailers, they had cells you know, when they weren't working. You know. they, so, they were sleeping in the cells? No, they weren't, no, they, they went back to a hotel but, uh, or you know, apartments. But, they, but during the day when they weren't working, they were in, they had the, in their cell. Uh, and it was it, it just being there, all of us kind of absorbing the power of that architecture um, and, and, and the history of this prison. It's an extraordinary prison that, that, that you know, has, has a lot of history. Uh, just affected everything, and so that was a really strong part of whatever whatever made anything feel real. So, so, so did it did it turn the scenario completely around? The involvement of the actors. Uh, I, I don't know about turning it around. I mean, what's interesting is, for example, Jack O'Connell, the lead, is very much a method actor, and he and 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 Ben Mendelsohn, who, who plays the father, is very much a non-method actor, and they both. They both get to the point where they get to in the film, which is very a very authentic performance by very different routes. And and so part of my job as a director is to is to allow um, them both to get to where they need to get to with their different traditions and their different ways of doing it in an environment that that that, that is controlled but also free. Uh, and and somehow rather being within within a jail that was a that was weirdly liberating. So. What was that you said? It was weirdly liberating, liberating. to be. In a jail. Yes. I mean, yeah. Just because you have a, it's a contained environment. It's a contained, controllable environment, which is a, you know, it's like a film studio, I suppose, in a way. Film studio is a jail. That's that's also an interesting comparison. <laughs> um, but there, there were actually two jails that were involved. Yes, or two buildings. Uh, the, well, the, the, 
very first or second shot in the movie and the last scene were all were, the, 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 were in another jail which has uh, just happened to have better exterior um, so so we, we shot there the very last day of filming so it was not strictly sequential but very very close yeah okay the whole approach to the film um, um, it, it was it difficult to to finance this sort of genre I'm not giving too much away um, and I'm saying um, for instance that it takes I think almost nine and a half minutes before we hear the first sort of dialogue voice. Um, not very suitable for television, uh, conventional wisdom has it. Well, and then, you don't, and then when you do hear it, you don't understand what they're saying anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's uh, what we have the yeah, subtitles yeah, yeah, for, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, it was one of the, this is quite hard to find because because Jonathan used a lot of language which is prison slang. Um, it's London prison slang, um, and it's very particular language. Uh, and people are going, they don't understand it. And I and I was kind of going, well, you will, you will understand it because it's embodied by people. Um, and I, I, you know, but it, it took a hard job to try and persuade people to, to finance the movie, particularly for that reason. And, um, for the language or the, for the situation language. or the style? The language. I mean, the langu people going, I don't understand it because there's too much slang going on. I decided that it was more important to keep the authenticity of the slang than it was to make it fully understandable. And I would urge you as an audience, you're going to see, read subtitles anyway, um, not to feel like you need to understand every word, to be honest. It, 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 it's not that, you know, that, that, that type of text. It's, you know, it, it, it's about an emotional response to, to the interaction of the characters more than particularly word for word, what every slang word means. But I think you have subtitles which uh, is um, uh, the explanation of, uh, of the, the slang word is in the subtitles. Anyway. So it's, it's almost spoiling your movie. Are we, are yeah, we on we the air again? Well, that's great. Are, oh, you, great. are you two? I don't know. Can you hear me? Well, it, it was a sort of Great. interesting game also. No, now, okay. now the now power goes yeah. back to, to equality. Where it again. belongs, okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hard to finance. How did the financing come about in the end? And, uh, and, and, but because of the language, not because of the situation or the message or whatever. Particularly because of the language. I mean, I think yeah. people thought it was a very strong film and they could see that there was something, something very interesting in the yeah. dynamics and, and all those kind of things, but it was, they were worried that people that it would be too obscure linguistically. It wasn't made expensively, that, that's how we financed it. We made it pretty cheaply. And Film 4 were involved, and, and uh, Northern Ireland Screen, Creative Scotland, and uh, some private equity. So it, it, it came together. Okay. All right. And Jack O'Connell, how did you find him? He, he, Jack, he, is, Jack he, is a he, bit he, of a star he, in the he, UK. He was, for he TV. was in Skins. Yes, uh, yeah. And um, I happened to talk to Brian Elsley uh, one or two years ago, who sort of um, who said, "Well, he, he, devo he developed Skins. It's a series about um, younger people yeah, in, uh, teenagers, in, in, yeah. in teenagers in, in London, I guess. No, not in London. I don't know where it's set. Actually, yeah, I think it's, it's Manchester London. or something. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's sort of um, abstract. And and it, 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 it basically he wrote it together with his son. And, and a group of people. The actors were very influential in, in, in giving the themes, etc. Did that play a role for you uh, in this background I mean, uh, that Jack O'Connell had? No, I, I'm embarrassed to say I've never watched an episode of Skins in my life. Uh, I, I, I'm, but it, Jack came to me through a normal casting process and I, and I met him and, and just thought he was great. And, it, and that, it was as sort of simple as that. You know, my casting director put me in front of him. Um, and I thought he had he had the kind of characteristics that, that we wanted for this film, which is about a boy in a in a in a man's world, um, uh, and someone who can handle himself in that environment. So that uh, and Jacks was just perfect. And and I, I hope that when you watch the film, guys, that you will uh, agree that he puts in an amazing performance. It's an amazing performance. It's also a very disturbing performance. Um, that goes especially for him, a little bit for for the father as well. I always have the feeling that as a um, as a director, you have to also love your characters more or less. Do, do, do you do you um, empathise with either the father or the son? I think what's in, your, in what's every your, what's in, your relation in to them? pretty much every situation when you're directing an actor in a movie, you're you know when you're directing you know two actors interacting with each other, one of whom might be you know perceived as good or bad. You're trying to empathize with everyone. You're trying to understand what all of the characters are doing. You're trying to, 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 to see where the, where, where, where the human being is in, in all that. So there's definitely... But you do make that difficult for the audience. 
Don't you think so? I don't know. At I least you're being controversial here. I'm, I think uh, I, I, it, it, it's, it, it goes with the job description a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I, 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 uh, um, I don't think it. When you say I make it difficult for the audience, I don't. I don't know. I don't know whether. I mean, I make the characters are not well, easy. Easy would be. Hey, are hey, are hey here's, here's the good guy. Okay. Uh, in, oh, in, no, in, no, in a bad environment. Yes. But it's. I mean, no, these nobody's, characters nobody's are, these characters good, are gray good area characters. The they're they're real human beings. They're not uh, cartoons. Yeah. No. They're, they're as bad um, as you and me. Yeah, they're as yeah, bad okay. as all of us. Yeah. Third time I'm being controversial. Well, yeah. Yeah. But yes. No, but you, you, they're you, probably you, actually you're, you're, rather worse than most of us. Actually, I have to say that. I mean, these people are, are very serious prisoners who've, who've all committed pretty terrible crimes. Although we deliberately choose not to really go into the detail of what they've done. Um, so you, you don't you don't mention it at all, if I'm not mistaken. Well, uh, you, it is subtly mentioned. Yeah. Um, it has probably something to do with with violence. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is there? Some sort of a message about broken Britain, or, or, or um, no, not really about broken Britain. I think there's, I think, I think there's, there, there are messages about um, broken men reaching across to each other uh, and, and build, you know, maybe building bridges in, in unlikely places. You're not giving um, the excuse of, of the, the social circumstances. It's, it's in them, in their characters, to, to be so violent and to be. Uh, I mean, you know, the, 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 that, that's one, well, one that, that, sign that, that, of... This is all because of Thatcher, you know? Yeah, but I'm not going to say that. No. Um, you know, and, and actually, I don't... I mean, I think that it's not even... It's not even although it, it suggests that there is some kind of corruption within the prison system, it's not even particularly a criticism of the prison system itself. It's, you know, it, it's... A, it, or it's society a, as a whole. It's, of, you know, of it's, a, it, it, it's, it, it's an attempt to... to, to Lay down some kind of fictional reality, uh, and and to allow the audience to make uh, their own judgment in some way, um, and to sympathise or feel for characters they usually probably wouldn't meet or wouldn't want to meet. Yeah, I mean, because I one of one of the of the things of the of the genre or of this this setup is that of course you you lock in the uh, the, the audience as well. Well, the, the doors are yeah, open exactly. the for doors emergencies, open. but yeah. Um, yeah. You can, it's uh, not the idea that you, you can, can just leave walk out. You can leave whatever you want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I mean, for part of the kind of the, the sort of aesthetic of the film is is, is to keep things relatively c contained, and uh, you, you know, there's not not a lot of uh, um, respite from, from from the life that's going on, uh, and th and that was a deliberate choice. Also, to keep it very tense as well. I think it's a very. I think in, in some ways it's almost like a horror film. You know, you you know that you know that something is going to explode pretty much at any moment, and uh, uh, and and that tension. But you never the, know when and where. What and what. And, yeah. And that, and it, I'm, you know, there's virtually no music in the film, so it's not. No one's being led up the up the garden path in the wrong way, and it's just the real tension of people that are there. Um, and one of the things that, that Jonathan, who, who was on set all the time, he went, he was, made, was very particular, he went to all the extras and said, don't ever look like you're relaxed all the time, you know. And so we wanted Jonathan to create an environment, the writer. The writer. Uh, we wanted to keep an environment during the shooting where nobody was relaxed, you know. Even if they're socialising, they're always... I, I asked about and the extras who, who don't look very relaxed either. Well, so where, where were they from? Well, they're all, they're all local people from, from Belfast where we filmed, you know. Um, and, and they were all able to identify with, so I'm, a, I'm an inmate now, and... Yeah, I mean, we did a little bit of sort of training for them. We tried to keep yeah. it, you know, you know and, and we had some prison officers who... The prison officers, in a way, were harder to kind of keep in line because they, they have more particular rhythms. So the prisoners yeah. sort of do what they're told to some extent. Yeah. Um, but the, the, uh, the officers, it was harder to make sure they felt real. But okay. uh, it was just a... I think we're going to wrap this up. You, you okay. gave us some context. Uh, I, I yeah. think you made everybody very curious. Okay. For the um, you made me very nervous, though. I feel like I've, I feel like I've, I've, I've done something kind of scary. Uh, you, you know, my, my own perversity is such. I take this as a compliment. Well, I'm sure you do. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. We're going to um, enjoy the film. Okay. And. Um, you can have a drink. Yeah, I might do that. Um, uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much for coming. Okay.
Dank u. Dank u wel. De nachtfilm is van de Servisch-Roemeense regisseur Shinisha Draghin uit 2010 If the Seed Doesn't Die. Het is een film over twee vaders op de Balkan. De een zoekt naar het lichaam van zijn verongelukte zoon en de ander zoekt naar zijn dochter die in de prostitutie is beland. Nou, dat zijn twee zware onderwerpen, maar toch valt er genoeg te lachen, want de situaties zijn doorspekt met zwarte humor. Dit programma werd mede mogelijk gemaakt door het International Film Festival Rotterdam.